Good morning. Welcome to Rock Island First Church of the Nazarene this morning. We are so happy to see you. Let's stand and begin our worship service together.
you please stand again? I just have you sing one more song and then we'll get on with the Christmas program because we know we all want to see the kids, right? <laughs> oh, come all you faithful, one of my favorites. for being here. I promise this isn't part of the show. I'll be quick. If you don't know me, I'm Eric Mail. I'm uh, the secretary of the church board. And I just had a brief good news announcement. Uh, the last board meeting, we discussed a number of things regarding the health of the church. We had um, earlier this year another church health survey, which shows that since the last church health survey, the church's health has improved in virtually every area, except for one, which is small groups, and we're working on that. But one of the key points of discussion was the renewal of Pastor Mark Abbott's call. The board had the ability to do one of two things. We could either decide by way of a vote whether it should be returned to the congregation for decision, or we could decide whether that was even necessary. So unanimously, the board decided that that was not necessary, that we wanted unanimously to return or to continue his call for another four years. So that's what we did. It's a little disappointing because I'm pretty sure if we put it to the congregation, it would have been unanimous as well. But I guess we'll, that we, we won't be able to see that. But I think we all kind of get the sense that this is a healthy church. And we're all very blessed that we have Pastor Mark leading us. We're, we need to make improvements, obviously. There's always things you can do better. And because we're a missional church, we want to reach out to the world around us. We're doing that. And we're blessed and thankful in so many ways for you, Pastor Abbott. And we're looking forward to the next four years. Now, before you throw anything at me, I'll get out of the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is good to see you. There's a protocol involved with that, that Eric had to do that. And so it just happened this Sunday, but it would have been as good as any other Sunday. So thank you for uh, 
uh, coming this morning, and we know you're looking forward to our children's program, and it's coming, and we're excited about that, and I'm so glad you're here. Also, <clears throat> in addition to this morning, um, that you get to sit and watch uh, your uh, children and grandchildren and, and any other relation you have to them, um, we, uh, we are looking forward to that. Tonight, uh, we are also having... Uh, a fellowship so that you can come and just sit around some tables and visit and share and talk and uh, where did Rhea go I don't know if she where she went but th I think there's some other stuff involved I don't you can see my nose it's not very long there's more than that but that alone would be enough is there anything else you'd like to share about tonight as far as what uh, we're coming for Wonderful, exactly. And I meant to catch her before she got off here to do that, so I apologize for that. Also, I want to let you know the angel tree is there. Um, there's been some questions about that. Some of the cards um, have uh, multiple items on there, uh, and if that's more than you can handle, that's okay. You can take a card and just pick one thing off of there, or, or whatever fits you, or whatever makes sense to you. If you're looking at some of the items saying, okay, I don't even know what that is, you don't have to buy that. You don't have to worry about it. But we don't anybody want anybody to miss out on the opportunity to bless uh, just because of the card. So if you just see something on there, that's fine. What we're looking for, if you're unaware, there was a family who lost their entire house and all of its contents. Uh, thankfully, nobody was hurt. Uh, but they lost all their stuff. And so when you read the cards, that's what mainly we were looking for. Uh, it was a family, several children. I'm not sure all the ages. There's probably some details on that. Uh, but that's what we're looking for that we would like to present to them at Christmas time. Uh, some items that um, not only did they, you know, looking forward to for Christmas with gifts, but they lost everything. Um, so if you would like to participate on that, uh, that's back there on the tree and the sign up for that. And like I said, even if it's just partial, that's okay. Uh, just let us know. Ushers, if you would come this morning, we will receive our offering. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our children. God, we thank you for your ministry to them. And God, we now look forward to seeing them worship and praise you in return. God, we thank you for each one of them. Bless them uh, as they do this. Bless this offering, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. you came this morning. We're thankful that you are here. We're thankful uh, to so many things. First of all, to you for coming this morning, and thank you to all of you who uh, ran the errands, did the driving, uh, getting out of bed to bring them here to practice and, and to prepare for this. They've been doing this since September, um, so they have really been working hard, and uh, we're excited to, uh, to get in on uh, seeing what it is. We even told some parents, you know what? Just drop them off so you don't see what it is. Keep it a little uh, for a surprise. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. Thank you to Lisa for all the time and effort put in that. Uh, Michaela and Marissa working with the sound. And again, so many others uh, that have been sacrificial in your giving uh, to make this possible. So this morning we have our children.
Take a look around this time of year and chances are you'll see the beautiful colors of Christmas everywhere. The colors of Christmas. They're celebrated inside and outside our homes, throughout our shopping malls, and even on the funny sweaters we are asked or made to wear. Yet, yeah, if you look closely enough and stop for a few moments to consider, these brilliant colors of Christmas can help retell the story of the birth of Christ. Let us now take a journey and unfold the colors of Christmas, both with our eyes and with our imaginations. White, a symbol of purity, the color of white can make us think of snowflakes, snowmen, and the fun of throwing snowballs. It reminds us of the strand of shimmering lights on a tree. White, it's also the color that reminds us of the angels who made the amazing announcement in the sky on that first Christmas night. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. There will still be a sign to you. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising to God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor is rest. The little town of Bethlehem will never be the same again. color green. During the season, it can remind us of holly leaves, ivy, and Christmas wreaths. It also reminds us of Christmas trees in every home, all brightly decorated with homemade ornaments. Green. It also brings to mind the grassy hillside 
of Bethlehem where the shepherds were watching their flocks the night of the name, an, angel's announcement. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. When the angels had led them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and, the, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Green, we can see it in our wreaths and trees, but also within the journey of the shepherds to worship and rejoice at the manger. Advent is an important time of the year for Christmas. The meaning and the significance we place on this time lead some to think that we need to enter into it in huge ways. We plan for big productions of live nativities where we can draw in hundreds of people. We orchestrate extravagant giveaways to new visitors in order to wow them by our generosity. We spend countless hours preparing for gifts, family dinners, and parties. In the midst of all the extravagant giving and huge productions, the small and seemingly insignificant may be shunned. We rationalize that if we are truly going to celebrate, then bigger is better. The message of Micah push pushes back on the bigger is better mentality. If we despise small beginnings and insist on seeing everything before we get on board, we miss out on joining what God is doing. For Micah points to the backwater village of Bethlehem, where one of the greatest kings of Israel emerged and announces that from this insignificant place, God will reveal his immense mercy. In short, the prophet wants us to embrace God's way of working. Little rural town, peasant girl, manger, lowly shepherds and cross. God takes the small, little, and seemingly insignificant and reveals the strength and majesty of his name to the ends of the earth. The little town of Bethlehem teaches us this Advent season to embrace the way of God. We are taught to embrace our limitations as opportunities to trust the unlimited ability of God. We are taught to, re to revel in small acts of kindness, little conversations over coffee, tiny homemade gifts, and simple notes of love as a means of God's enormous grace. As we gaze upon that manger in that little town in the middle of nowhere Israel, we should praise the creator of all things for coming to us in peace and shepherding us into the celebration of his return.
It's the glimmering color we can see in ribbons, bows, and packages. It reminds us that might be seen on top of the Christmas tree or the color of church bells ringing a loud festive melody for all to hear. Gold, it's also the color of the bright star in the sky over Bethlehem that led the wise men on the long journey to Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. And they saw, so when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold, like the wise men, may we seek after the Christ child too. Follow the star to a place unexpected. Would you believe after all we've projected a child in a manger? Lonely and small, the weakest of all, unlikeliest hero. Wrapped in his mother's shawl, just a child. Is this who we've waited for? Cause how many kings step down from their thrones? How many lords have abandoned their homes? How many grades have become the least for me? And how many gods have poured out their hearts to romance a world that is torn all apart? How many fathers gave up their sons for me? Bringing out gifts for the newborn Savior, all that we have, whether costly or meek, because we believe. 
Gold for his honor and frankincense for his pleasure and myrrh for the cross he'll suffer. Do you believe? Is this who we've waited for? Cause how many kings step down from their thrones? How many lords have abandoned their homes? How many greats have become the least for me? And how many gods have poured out their hearts to romance a world that is torn all apart? How many fathers gave up their sons for me? Only one did that for me. How many kings stepped down from their thrones? How many lords have abandoned their homes? How many greats have become the least? How many gods have poured out their hearts to romance a world that is torn all apart? How many fathers gave up their sons for me? Only one did that for me. The color red. You see it in the stripes of delicious candy canes and the petals of beautiful poinsettias. Red. It's seen in the festive holly berries and has the brightly colored nose of our favorite little reindeer. Mixed with many other colors, red just might be the most vibrant and utilized color in all of Christmas. When we flip through the pages of the Bible, we can even see letters in red. These are the words of Christ. They are colored red to remind us of his sacrifice for us on the cross. He came as the Christ child born in the major, but later gave his life so that we can be in, with him in heaven forever. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The color of salvation, the red that makes us see. The words that Jesus told us, the blood that set us free.
White, green, gold, and red. All around the world, Christmas is filled with these festive and vibrant colors. Over and over, these colors tell us the story that has literally changed the world. And, and the words in red, the red letters of Christ, they still speak to us today. This season, look for the color... Look for the story of Christ as you look all around. Let the magnificent colors of Christmas remind you of the true meaning of the season. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The colors of Christmas. They tell a story. A red letter Christmas. thank you for all of you for coming today. I want to say thank you to all of them because they have worked so hard. This, they get up and do it once and it looks so easy, but they have been working since September um, on this. So um, thank you all. You did a super job. Outstanding. And thanks uh, again to Star, who's behind the banner, and Michaela, Marissa, and to my mom for all the countless hours of help because it takes a lot for them as well. So I appreciate everyone's help. You know, we uh, have had a, a theme for this Advent season in uh, Anticipate. It's on the front of the bulletin, um, and that's what we're looking at. And uh, I am pretty sure, by the fact that you're here, uh, you've been anticipating this day for a while now. 
Uh, it's been on your calendar, and Mark, you were told about it. This is the day of the children's program, and we're so glad you came and so glad that uh, they did this, and, and this is why we do this. It's such a treat, and it's such a great thing to anticipate. Uh, that's, that's the nature of anticipating. You're looking forward to something good that you enjoy, that you like, and that is going to be beneficial to you. Uh, and, and there was no doubt that that happened this morning. I was uh, in the back uh, to start it, and I was noticing, and it kind of struck me, uh, the number of people recording. But then it struck me how much it had changed. Who could have anticipated the day when in order to videotape your child, you didn't have to stand over by an outlet with a tripod and something as big as, you know, that you had to put on your shoulder even. Who could have anticipated that now you just pull it out of your pocket and you can hold it almost anywhere and, and it's no problem. The nation of Israel was anticipating this day for literally thousands of years. They were anticipating the Messiah. They were anticipating the King. They were anticipating the One who was going to come, make things right, bring peace, do all that they had hoped and wanted. They were anticipating it. They were anticipating His coming. But when you read the red letters... In the gospel, the vast majority missed it, missed his coming, did not know it was occurring, did not know it was happening. And as you saw in the display, as you heard in the songs, it really just came down to, we don't know exactly the number, but really just a couple of groups, the shepherds. And the wise men. That's it. All the thousands to millions, whatever it may be, of the Jewish people looking for this day, it was only the wise men and the shepherds that witnessed his coming. Why is that? Why would it be just that? In all of these people who are anticipating, why was it only them that showed up? You anticipated today and you showed up. They anticipated for years and had no clue. Why would it only be those two? I heard this earlier this week, and I forget why they said, but I was thinking about why would that be. And it comes down to a willingness, an openness. When you look at these two groups, the shepherds out in the field watching their flock by night. They're bedded down. They've got the sheep set. They're, everything's all taken care of. There's nothing left to do after the whole day of all of this doing. Now it's time to rest. Now it's time to relax. Now it's time to sleep. And some angels show up and say, hey, go to Bethlehem. And they say, okay, let's go. We say, oh, that's no big deal. Is it? They didn't know that. They didn't know who was coming. They just got an announcement that night and said, let's go. That's the willingness. That's the willingness that God sees, God recognizes, and God uses. The wise men, there's a lot of tradition behind them as far as how many of their names, where they came from, how far they traveled, when they arrived. But all of that really points to, again, a willingness to come from another country to witness the birth of a king that they only partially kind of knew about. The distance travel, whatever it was back then, are you kidding me? That was huge. They come, they see, they present some gifts, and then they go back home. The willingness of those two groups, I think, is why out of all those that are anticipating His coming, those two got to witness it. What about us? We're not shepherd. Hopefully we're wise men in some nature. Maybe not like them. But in some way, where's our willingness? 
Because, see, Jesus still wants to come. Every day, every moment, every situation, He still wants to come. But He's looking for willingness people to come through. We just had that in our Sunday school this morning. We're Christ's ambassadors. He's sending His message through us. He's not going to come like this again. He's going to come, it's going to split the sky, and it's going to be where nobody can miss it. But until then, He still wants to come every day, every moment, in every situation through us. Why? Because He so loved the world. Not willing that any should perish, but that all would have everlasting life. We're ambassadors of that. He wants to come through us with that message. But we have to be willing. Like the shepherds and the wise men, we have to be willing. We can still anticipate His coming, but only if we're willing. When we're willing, we'll see Him coming. We'll see it in what happens and the reactions and, and the outcome of when we try to minister, share, help. And we can anticipate that every day, every moment, in every situation. Jesus coming again because He loves. But that means we have to love like he loved. And that's what the red letters tell us, too. Love one another. Just as I, Jesus, have loved you. The children were willing. They were anticipating his coming, that they would come up here and sing. We were willing, anticipating coming here this morning. We can do this, because we've done it already. Now it's just a matter of being willing for Jesus to come in every situation, every moment, all the time. This week, that opportunity might be there. I hope you will anticipate it. And by anticipating, we would look for it. But when it comes, there has to be the willingness or we're going to miss it just like so many missed that coming. We don't want to miss any more comings by Jesus. So glad you came this morning. It is so good to see you all. I hope that uh, this uh, thrilled your heart and will last with you uh, this coming week and that whatever may occur in, uh, in the work site or in the shopping or the chaos or whatever Christmas may bring, that you can always come back and anticipate His coming because in all of that, God is looking to use us to love the world still. And we can anticipate that. Let's stand this morning. God, we thank You for Your coming. We thank You that the story has been told, that it has been written down that we can read, that we can see the words. You came. Christmas is about your coming. Lord, as we go from this place now, we would ask that you would help us as we move from anticipating a, a day on a calendar, which we can and we do, and it is so great, and all of this, from the decorations that the children's talked about, the, to the songs and the music and all the stories and all that is wrapped up in Christmas. It is so wonderful. It is such a great time. And we thank you for that. And we praise you for that. But God, we would ask now that you would help us as we anticipate your coming through us. Still, this week, today, help us that we don't miss it. And that we can again rejoice, give you glory, sing songs of praise because you're still looking to come. We thank you for that. We thank you 
that your promise says you will be with us to the end of the age because you came. God, I thank you for each one here this morning. I pray that you would bless them. Be with them. Go with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed. Thanks so much for coming.